And we're seeing this now like once a week. But, you know, we are seeing a snapback rally at some point during the week, right? You know, who knows, maybe it's tomorrow. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com uh, nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. Again, aggressive market. Uh, it continues to be um, kind of the same dog and pony show, right? Uh, market uh, super weak, uh, super aggressive. Uh, we'll have days that will spike back, reverse, but at, ultimately this is kind of the same uh, same thing, you know, on rotation. It's kind of like the the hamster wheel effect, uh, or a lot of you guys who you guys remember from uh, uh, from from the '80s or there was the '90s with Bill Murray Groundhog's Day. It's completely the same day over and over again. Um, the the one thing that I will say in 2020 and 2021, um, you know, it was very tough for me for a long time to kind of acknowledge that the 2021 market was the closest thing to dot com right because dot com was just on a different level so for example for every one stock that you'd see up you know 100 200 percent during dot com you'd have days that 20 of these stocks would be up doing the same thing so i finally acknowledged it at some point around 2021 i go yeah you know what it is the closest thing that we've seen to dot com and the one thing that i remember uh during that era when we finally started unwinding and it, it was a pretty aggressive uh, dot com bubble, right? That finally exploded. A lot of people I remember were in denial, right? So, for example, like a stock like uh, Cisco, I'll give you a perfect example. Not that Cisco is the end all be all, but just to give you an idea, this wasn't even an internet stock, but just to give you an idea of what I mean. So, Cisco during the dot com eras, you know, just like everything else, you could see here, you know, during this whole time, had this massive, massive run. And in between this whole massive, massive run, it had five stock splits, just to give you an idea how the euphoric nature was. And after the five stock splits, so you could do the math, uh, the pulse split high was $82, but you have to like divide that by five. So let's just say whatever it was, right? $400. And I remember when, when the unwinding came, they started taking down everything. It wasn't just the dot-com stocks. Uh, it was the storage stocks. It was the biotech stocks. It was... The networkers, for example, like a, a Cisco uh, or a Corning that was like a glass maker or some shit like that, whatever it was. Anyway, the point was when you had all these stocks on wine, and again, we could even sit here with Corning, same thing. You had the same thing, right? All these stocks had exactly the same chart. And all you kept on hearing was all the same thing, right? Oh, Corning just went from 100 to 80. It just went from 80 to 50. Oh, my God, at 40, it's a steal. At 30, it's like taking candy from a baby. Oh, at $20, oh my God, back up the truck. I'm going in all in. And then the stock goes to $1.50, right? It goes to $1.50 uh, approximately two years later. Again, nobody's saying by any stretch of the imagination that any stock that was two, three, four hundred dollars a share, you know, two months ago, three months or four months ago, is gonna go to zero. It's not what I'm talking about. But the most important part in this in the common denominator is that the dot-com bubble had where this kind of, I don't want to call it a bubble, but like this, this back test is, is there was very, very high inflated prices. So for example, if you guys remember, there was a, there was a company called eToys, right? And eToys had this big, big move, but eToys never made any money, right? eToys never made any money. Uh, they were just basically selling toys online. And, you know, let's just pretend, I don't remember how high the stock was, but let's pretend the stock went from two to 75. So somebody from $75 when the stock went to 30 said, oh my God, the stock is oversold. The stock is not oversold because it should have never been to $75. So when it finally went to zero, well, that was its fair value because fundamental analysis at some point takes over, right? So you can make an argument that a stock, for example, like UPST, which had... I would say some pretty bad earnings tonight, right? When you look at UPST and you turn around and say, well, the stock was at $400, you 
you know, only last October, right? Go, be, before going into today's earnings session, look how cheap the stock is at $77. And you could turn around and say, well, wait a minute, how could fundamentals, right? Fundamentals be warranted for this stock in the first place. Maybe the stock deserved to be at $12. Maybe it deserved to be at $8. Maybe it deserved to be at $9. It shouldn't have went to $400 at all. So the idea that after the close, they came out with earnings and the stock's at $44 doesn't mean the stock is cheap. It just means that the same thing happened during the dot-com bubble with the e-toys and all these stocks that never should have been at 70, 80, 100, $200 a share because their fundamentals were not warranted to their stock price and finally came down crashing. This is the same scenario. This is a comparable type of unwind that some stocks or a lot of stocks that were deemed as the growth renaissance for this generation we're really not supposed to be there in the first place. So when you look at a stock like a UPST tonight and said, my God, the stock's a gift from 400 to $44. How can you not buy it? Well, there's a reason why the stock's at $44 and maybe three years later. And again, I don't really know anything about the company. I think, that, you know, I really don't know anything about the fundamentals, but if the stock goes to four or $5 a share, it just meant that technically versus fundamentally, it wasn't a match. And that's unfortunately what we're seeing here with a lot of stocks. And a lot of stocks that we saw up last year, really ridiculously, like a name like a Fubo, right? I looked at this thing the other day, I go, wait, what? $3, don't you? This stock was what? This stock was what? At three, what was it, one, at 60 bucks, right? This thing was at $62 in December. It's at $3 today. Does it mean the stock is oversold? It just means it shouldn't have been there to begin with. So yeah, as much as we talk about a lot of similarities from dot-com uh, to 2021, I think the biggest common denominator is the pullback that happened after. And if you look back at the stocks that did survive the pullback from the dot-com name, what do they have in common, right? Think about it. What do they have in common? Cisco. Microsoft, right? Microsoft, Cisco, Amazon, right? Amazon, eBay, they all make money, right? Isn't that the whole point? They all make money. So the, the, the moral of the story is, if you are an investor and you're underwater on a lot of these companies, right? Check their, you know, this is where you really start to be a little bit of a technical analysis and start looking at their balance sheet. You know, did the stock warrant going from $3 to 200? Did the stock's fundamentals uh, put it in a position that it can rebound. Maybe not this week, maybe not in this year, but maybe it can't rebound in the futures. But if their fundamentals don't match up to uh, to their long-term prowess of kind of bubble-like status, then unfortunately for all the Amazons that survived and the Apples and Microsoft and the Oracles and the Intels that survived, stocks like eToys and Spyglass and this one and that one did not. So it's a kind of a, a shame that this generation is being exposed to what we got exposed to uh, back in mid 2000, 2001. But unfortunately, as we say all the time, uh, if you don't uh, respect history and understand history and in, in embrace history, you are doomed to repeat it. And unfortunately, that is what's happening now. So again, that's the deal, man. That's the deal. Nothing materialistically changed. Uh, we are still going lower. Uh, again, I do believe, and we're seeing this now like once a week, but you know, we are seeing a snapback rally at some point during the week, right? You know, who knows? Maybe it's tomorrow, maybe it's the next day, maybe it's Thursday. At one point, we do get a snapback rally. Unfortunately, a lot of new traders wake up, that's it, that's a generational bottom, that's it. And then three days later, we're back to all-time lows. So don't, don't get tricked by, don't get tricked by snapback rallies. They're very aggressive. Uh, they usually come out of nowhere. Uh, the last couple of snapback rallies came at lunchtime, right? Literally at lunchtime. And the Fed, if you guys remember the Fed day last Wednesday, it came literally the last hour, 900 points, literally an hour in the last uh, trading day. And every sell-off is a gap down. It's methodical. And they're taking turns, ripping these stocks apart. And the, the worse the fundamentals of a company is, the higher probability it gets cut in half and then cuts in half and then gets cut in half and then gets cut in half. And eventually we don't talk about it uh, anymore. So going into tomorrow, again, of course, I mean, look, of course I'm sell biased. I mean, I, I, how do you not be sell biased? But again, uh, and, I, and I, I warn, and I try to warn everybody, uh, pre-market during morning strategy, don't get too aggressive at the open, right? There's definitely names I like and, and, and trades that I definitely, definitely uh, I'm very interested in, but don't get too aggressive at the open. Like I said, like a minute ago, no matter how aggressive 
the selling is, as you can see here by the charts, no matter how aggressive there is, there's massive reversals, Re really, really aggressive reversals. And the most important thing is you don't want to get caught in something that is overextended to the downside because that's going to be the one that's going to have that big aggressive move up. And the last thing you want to do is get spread out, spread out, spread out and be, uh, you know, be a victim uh, of a really good aggressive uh, short covering rally. So that's kind of the game plan going into tomorrow. Um, look at, you know, look at the names uh, that I really like for tomorrow. I mean, look at Apple. And here, here's one more important, uh, well, here's one more important note. And I think a lot of you guys who have uh, option uh, scanners will, will, will kind of uh, agree with me on this. I think today was the very first day that we saw really big, massive institutional money flow deep out of the money, short term expiration with millions and millions of dollars bet uh, deep out of the money puts. You know, we saw uh, all day today, six and seven figure bets on a um, couple of weeks out for Apple 147, 145 puts. Uh, NVIDIA was getting NVIDIA was getting 170 and they, they killed this thing. It was getting 150s. Tesla, we saw a massive buyer come in for the July 600s, right? We saw the 750s and we'll get, we'll get to individual pivots in a second, but we saw some really, really aggressive uh, put buying today. And again, maybe it's something, maybe it's nothing, but again, if you are a long bias trader, you know, really, you know, really pay attention to those stats. Again, might not affect you tomorrow, maybe it will, or maybe it already has, but today was really the first time that I could see these massive, massive bets uh, with short-term expiration. So the way the institutional money flow is coming in, uh, they're not expecting that today was the bottom. So just something to uh, think about. So let's talk about the pivots. Um, let's talk about the pivots today. Again, some really, really aggressive, um, you know, just aggressive pulls. I, that's the best way of saying it. Um, Tesla, right? Uh, 821.70 is uh, the April 28th lows. If it builds below, uh, can see 800. Here is Tesla. I, I still think Tesla goes lower. Uh, Tesla got destroyed, right? It took out the 821, uh, traded down all the way down to 780. This thing confirms today's channels. This thing has a shot to get the 750s this week because again, they were coming for uh, the 750 and the 740 uh, weekly puts. So Tesla, again, massive, massive move on Tesla. Uh, Google, you know, again, we were talking about the earnings lows. Google closed right at the earnings lows. 2250, they were fighting with a buyer all day, but 2250 held twice if it builds below can start a multiple day decline. Here's Google guys, it hasn't gone yet, right? It hasn't gone yet, but look at this channel here. If this thing confirms today's channel tomorrow, I think there's 50, 100 points in this thing. So definitely, definitely keep an eye on that. Uh, TDOC, uh, again, got hit on Friday, confirmed today. I think tomorrow, I think tomorrow or the next day could test earnings low. I go nice splash on Friday. 32 now becomes a big area if it confirms down, might finally see the earnings low. So here was 32 on TDOC, right? Here's 32 on TDOC, went down to about 30, 30 bucks. Again, it's very, very close to its earnings low. Once it gets below that earnings low, it's gonna start a next uh, multiple day uh, decline. So keep an eye on that. Uh, NVIDIA got massacred. Uh, 179.90 Friday's bottom channel, if it builds below, can flush more. Here was NVIDIA, just an absolute destruction. He took out this whole channel here, closed right at the lows at 169, 168. This thing looks lower. They were buying really, really deep uh, puts on this thing as well. Uh, Netflix, 175.80. If it builds below, can see more. Again, it just, they were just going one by one. Uh, Netflix, here's a 75.80. Right, here's a 75.80, traded down to 72. This thing just continues to go lower. Again, once it closed, below this, and here's my point, once it closed below the earnings low of 185, it just starts drifting, right? It might not be aggressive every single day, but it starts drifting. So far, it's $12 below uh, the earnings low. Uh, CTSH, I still like this thing. They held this thing up for whatever reason today. Uh, VR, VRSK 183.40, again, another earnings play. VRSK 183.40 needs to build. Here is VRSK. Here's the 183.40 and went all the way down uh, to 177. This thing still looks lower. Look at look which room you still have. This thing gets below 175. This thing is toast. Uh, and that is it, right? That is it. Yeah, here coming in for the 
70 puts. Here comes 756, next support uh, on Tesla. So that's it, right? That's it, guys. So, it, you know, unfortunately, again, for all you guys who are new to trading in the last, you know, three, four years, you know, you hear all the time about people trading the bears market and, you know, until you actually see it, uh, you really can't appreciate uh, what this thing is and what this thing isn't. This isn't a bull market. This isn't that you can just take shots. This isn't uh, a market that you can just throw caution to the wind. There are a lot of head fakes. There are a lot of aggression cycles. There are spikes, even though they were at a big sell bias. But the most important thing is, again, the common denominator is technical analysis. And once we close below the 50-day moving average, until we regain the 50-day moving average, this is going to be the same cycle until it's not. Guys, God bless. My daughter has another softball game. God's help. I'll see you all tomorrow. Take care.